and welcome to Wise Women Wednesdays. My name is Jennifer Regular, the Soul Illuminator at Lighting the Path, and also host of the show where I get to bring these incredible, phenomenal, amazing women from all around the world who get to share what they have strengthened in their journey for their sense of self to become who they came here to be and do what they came here to do and inspire you to do the same. Today, my guest is from Los Angeles, California. Diana Diaz is here after 20 years of working in sales. And then she trained in the corporate field until one day she had her first hypnotherapy session for flight anxiety. It was then that she fell in love with hypnotherapy and meditation. She got certified and began seeing clients support them in achieving their desired goals. Diana has a bachelor's degree in sociology and has always enjoyed working with people. She uses her intuition and experience to support people through her sessions, meditations, blogs, and of course, social media platforms. Diana, Diana's intention and her vision is to live in a world where humankind can be free, love themselves, and live their best life. And today she's here to share with you how you can find your purpose. Diana, welcome. It's such a pleasure and a joy to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Likewise. Absolutely. So why, how did this become your passion? I mean, you were in the corporate world and then somehow you got into hypnotherapy and now helping people find their purpose. I mean, it takes a very different mindset to be able to move from the corporate path or the corporate ladder <laughs> into a more soulful approach, really, in helping people find their purpose. How did you come to find yours? Um, absolutely. I always, as a child, loved helping people. And as a matter of fact, in my resume or anytime I had a job interview, that was one of my key things. I love working with people. And I think it came from when I was maybe eight, 10 years old, maybe experiencing things at home that weren't ideal or seeing the news and learning about things that, you know, could go better. And it always gave me this need or want of really having people be happy and doing good. And it also fulfills my cup. And I, I just feel like it's very fulfilling to have a job like this. So being in the corporate world and even before just sales management, I always enjoyed working with people. And so that was fulfilling in that sense. However, it was not until I had that flight experience that you mentioned earlier that gave me severe anxiety. And uh, my doctor said, you really have to see a therapist or you have to change jobs. And I loved my job, so of course I was not gonna change my job. And I, uh, my therapist was retired. I went on to Google and I put therapy for anxiety and that's how I found hypnotherapy. Um, after my first session, I was able to get back on the plane and literally two days later fly from LA to Florida, which is, you know, across the US, like four and a half hour flight. And I was inspired. I was inspired to take hypnotherapy classes. I right away got certified and I thought to myself, hmm, I'll do this when I'm retired. I love this so much, but I also love my job. So I will do this when I'm retired. Uh, and then a couple of, of years later, with thanks to COVID, some things changed and I ended up transitioning to the job that I do now, which is hypnotherapy. And I feel like it has come full circle now. <laughs> Incredible that it has come full circle and, it, and it's not quite to where you were before either. It's almost like spiraling forward. And we know that the path isn't linear, that it takes many twists and turns, many pivots. What do you think it was when you were studying sociology that helped seed what you do now? Well, um, well, first I want, you're reminding me of something that I wanted to share. Like the reason why this topic is important, and I know you brought that up in your initial question of finding our purpose. Um, I find that this is a topic that's pretty much always relevant and it fits multiple age groups, right? Mm. Because when we're in college or when we're young, we 
I don't know if it's we're rushed to find a major, but that's what's planted in our seed. Like we have to know what we want to do for the rest of our lives, right? Right. And it's a commitment. Um, and then again, when we've been also in a job for several years, like fast forward, sometimes people get disconnected and they feel like maybe possibly burnt out and like, is this my purpose? This is what I meant to do. And then we have the folks that retire and want to get another job and feel like, okay, do I want to do something completely different? What was I doing was fulfilling? Should I do something similar? So I think that this is a topic that is always going to be relevant and it's important to people to feel fulfilled and happy. So going back to your question about, you know, sociology, I initially wanted to be a doctor than a psychologist, but when I got to college, I really liked the study of a group of people. I like to see how people work in different dynamics and different environments with other people. And what I learned is that people are good. They're just conditioned through their environment to respond a certain way or make certain choices. And so then again, my need of like, oh, wow, having this information, how can I support people so they can live a better life? Right. And that was really interesting. <laughs> I love that. And it's interesting, Diana, similarly, I went to school wanting to major in sociology as well. And I took some sociology courses, but then it veered off into clinical forensic psychology. And I thought it was going to be a clinical forensic psychologist, which is completely different from lighting the path. Now, <laughs> one's very dark and one's very light. And, you know, there, of course, there were a lot of pivots along the way. But you mentioned something, too, as you were sharing a little bit about your background, about, you know, being witness to what was going on in society in the world. And that was similar for me, too, when I was 10. Only 10. It seems so young now, but it, at the time it didn't because it was just the way I was seeing things. But I started writing a book and like taking notes through my observations and thinking I was going to call it When Society Determines Your Destiny. And I think that, too, is what kind of planted seeds. It's more in the childhood. And like you say, then we're conditioned to pick a major and then kind of focus our time and energy all on that subject. But it's when we were younger that kind of observations, that openness, that's exploring, that learning, you know, and we are just on to absorbing everything that's going on around us and feeling what's going on within us and what's coming alive. And it took me three decades actually to publish that book, but it wasn't about society determining our destiny. It was more about, as you say, finding our purpose. And for me, it was how to embrace your power. It was a healing journal of self-discovery, rediscovering who we are, you know, what we came here to do. And you too are finding that purpose. And like you say, that part is always relevant. But you found a path to it through hypnotherapy, hypnosis. So tell us what is unique about that kind of process. Well, hypnosis is a modality that supports people with healing and achieving goals and relaxation. So, oh. and what I mean by healing is like the same it speaks to the same that you were just sharing about, like having this transformation, you know, learning and changing your book, right? Like life takes different turns in our path. <laughs> I think it's, it, it's, it's always for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so healing in that sense and relaxation and really what it is, it's uh, relaxing the mind and body and asking ourselves, ourselves question questions to see uh, what it is that maybe perhaps we want to work on or we want to arrange perhaps maybe beliefs or give ourselves new goals. And by the way, we can all do this without hypnosis. We huh. can manage our mind. We can um, train our mind to think a certain way, uh, which supports our self-esteem and uh, our discipline. But through hypnosis, it's, it's, it's facilitated by myself and, you know, when other people do hypnosis, of course, other certified hypnotherapists, and we serve as guides. We serve as guides, and it's almost like a, a faster process, but anyone can do this. Um, and I just love hypnotherapy because it's um, a clear, easy way process to really deep dive in like literally 30 minutes or an hour. Wow. And, and, you know, reset goals, reset new beliefs that really support us. 
Wow. And in fact, I, when I do follow-ups with my clients, I also support them in coaching to ensure that, that they're doing the things that they committed to and to support them in any way they can, still with the mind management. So thank you for asking. I can see how useful and helpful that would be, Diana, because there's a lot of people who know that there's got to be something more, that there's something else that they're meant to do and can't quite grasp what that is. And so being able to have something like hypnosis that can help you deep dive and uncover what's there within you to be able to be bringing that out and then guiding them and coaching them through what's come up. It sounds incredible. Thank you. So what kind of transformations have you seen in your work through that then? Oh, I've seen a lot of beautiful transformations. Um, a lot of times clients will come in and say, I want to address this. Or I want to work on this. And I think it's because of this. And once we go into the hypnosis uh, session and do exercises, by the time that they're done, they're like, whoa, blown away with the memories and the events and the way things tie together. And it just all makes sense to them. Okay, now I get it. It was really this, what was going on in the past that now I see it's almost replaying as a pattern, uh, but it's no longer serving me. So now I wanna make you know, another choice uh, or I wanna make changes in my life or in the way I think that will then produce different events. So I see people um, find their self-worth uh, they get reassurance that they're enough, that they matter, um, that they do belong, that they belong, and that um, they can achieve their goals. And in this work, I see that people get reconnected with their um, natural talents, like the things that are joys from their childhood. And um, by the end of the session, they say themselves, oh, I definitely can do that project. Oh, I'm definitely going to do this. I can do this. It's like they get reconnected because it's always been inside of them. Yes. Um, and one other thing I want to add is that people have all the answers within. Mm. Um, people always have all the answers within. And sometimes at the end, people say, thank you so much, uh, you know, because you did this. And I say, no, I did not do this. <laughs> you did the work. I just facilitated so I've seen beautiful transformations and self-worth. Yeah. Yes. Increase. And to be able to witness that is just so rewarding, you know, and to to wake people up to, like, as you say, what's in within them and those possibilities. But it sounds like the process you do and how you do it and who you are, of course, too, is all about helping people to gather the courage and confidence with those choices that sometimes we don't trust ourselves to make or even realize we have the power to make because of something that might have clouded that vision, right? Or clouded that idea, or maybe we've made a choice that didn't turn out the way that we thought, or maybe disappointed someone or let someone down, that um, we become afraid <laughs> of, you know, stepping up and stepping out and making new choices because, you know, having those choices not turn out so well in the past might have created self-doubt. And so it sounds like, like you were saying about having that self-worth and empowering them to make new choices and to recognize that they can create the life that they want to live, at least from this moment forward. Absolutely. You make a great point because growing up, sometimes we hear, um, you know, criticism or comments from peers, like when we're younger, or maybe parents are not meaning to do harm, but will say, oh, you didn't get it right, or a sibling may make fun of us, or, you know, just it, it happens even as adults, even if that's not our intention. And so people then start to believe that they can't do something, mm -hmm. or that they're not worthy, and it, chip, it chips that self-esteem away. And so um, through the sessions of hypnosis, they're reconnected to their true self. And it's just so beautiful to see. Um, and I will get random uh, follow-up uh, information that they are now in a new relationship or they got a new job or, um, or they got an increase in their salary um, I mean, or their health has turned around and, you know, things that maybe we weren't even working on and just by making these changes on how they feel about themselves uh, makes and, and the beliefs 
uh, make a big difference on the physical outcome too. And of course, it's not something that the clients and I talk about at the time in the sessions. It's just some beautiful gifts that I get to hear afterwards during the follow-ups. There's so much, isn't there, that happens after the sessions. It's not the session itself, but what happens afterwards, what's been opened <laughs> up and cleared and, you know, revealed. And people get to experience that in their kind of recovery, so to speak, isn't it? <laughs> There's a, yeah. a big sense of freedom. Yeah. It's like a big sense of freedom. And, and that is just... Um, beautiful and and something that a lot of people um, ask for and it's just nice to see. It is nice to see and what is it that you're seeing when people are coming in initially what kind of issues or experiences are they having that they would want to access your services? Um, different things um, sometimes people have trouble sleeping um, or sometimes they um, they feel that they're overeating, if they're feeling stressed or they had a hard day at work, or even if they did good, um, having a sweet snack is almost like a reward, you mm -hmm. know, like, so they'll see like, I'm rewarding myself, but it's just not helping um, my physical health or uh, preparing for a job interview um, or just not feeling happy with how they feel inside. Uh, just different things. It could be physical, it could be emotional, also for grief. I've had clients come in and say that their grief is so heavy from losing a loved one that it's hard to move forward or it's hard to enjoy life again. Um, so what I find is that um, anxiety plays a role almost in all of these things that, uh, you know, topics that people come and see me. And again, it's going back to reconnecting to their confidence, to their who they really are and empowering them. But also because hypnotherapy is relaxing, mm. supports automatically with their mind and body, just releasing and feeling free, even if it's for those two hours. Oh, that's beautiful. For and, two hours, you get to feel relaxed yeah. and free, <laughs> light and content. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing exercises in the first hour uh, or so, but they're still in a relaxed state of mind. And then they get a uh, recording afterwards of their guided meditation so they can continue to practice this on their own. Uh, and so then they're, through repetition, the body and the mind start to learn and become familiar with relaxation. And they're also new beliefs, they're new goals. So it's almost yeah. like a reconditioning in a sense, would you say? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And a calm, relaxed mind. I mean, I'm sure there are so many people <laughs> that want to experience a calm and relaxed <laughs> mind. So, how can people get a hold of you, Diana? Uh, people can get a hold of me uh, directly through my website, uh, www.astonishingmind.com. Uh, I have a section in there where it says a uh, free discovery call of any questions for a hypnotherapy session, but essentially people can book that time and just have a Q and A with me. If there's something that they hear on this podcast that gives them curiosity and would like to bounce back ideas, please feel free uh, to go on there and book. It's a free 30 minute call and um, through Zoom and my schedule's on there. It's super easy to book. Oh, perfect. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for being able to offer that for people. So the website, astonishingmind.com, I love the name, Astonishing Mind, <laughs> is a perfect place to go and learn more, discover more. And then if you really want to connect and ask some questions or just find some answers, then booking that call can be very useful and help provide some insight moving forward. So thank you for being able to offer that and for all of the work you do, Diana. It sounds incredible, amazing, and obviously so transformative for people. Thank you. Do you work with anybody or are there um, specific groups of people that you like to work with or that you can help the most? Um, my age group is uh, pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. And also um, because I do the work through Zoom, I help, uh, I'm based in Los Angeles, but I support clients um, essentially all over the world. Like I've had clients, New Zealand, uh, sorry, New Zealand, Australia, Mexico, Canada, um, and different parts of the US. Um, age groups vary. Uh, the most, I think, 
Yeah, no, age groups vary. I think mostly a lot of people like in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s are usually interested in this type of work. And again, also people in their early 20s to ask questions about their career and goals is also common. Yes, absolutely. I mean, anyone can truly benefit from this. Do you have any other final words of wisdom to share with the audience? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, I feel that being open and being open to change, stretching ourselves and even investing in ourselves is very important um, because uh, our mind tends to want to do what's familiar, like mm -hmm. what we're used to. Um, but growth happens through change and learning and trying different things. And so if there is, you know, something that you want to do, you want to pursue, like do it, even if it starts as a hobby. And when we set ourselves goals, uh, achieving the goal is exhilarating and exciting. However, also all the steps that it took to get there is also very important because when we embrace those steps towards our final journey for our goal, then it makes everything else so much enjoyable and it makes life enjoyable. So uh, this is important for me to share because it's something that I chat with my clients, um, you know, and just embracing the whole experience of transformation. Mm, embrace the whole experience of transformation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Diana. Really appreciated everything you shared. Thank you. Likewise. And thank you to every single one of you that have been listening and watching. We honor you and we'll see you again next time on Wise Women Wednesdays. Bye for now.